What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Mike Sasser here, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at some Luminaire software. Luminaire 4 has come out about six months ago. And just so you know, I am totally not sponsored by them. I just got a ton of questions asking about what I thought of the software. I actually even reached out to them and asked for an affiliate code and I haven't heard back from them. If you're a boudoir photographer who is looking to grow your boudoir business, I've created an exclusive private Facebook group where we do live weekly photo critiques. We hold each other accountable for getting work done and focus on your business to become part-time or full-time photographers. If that sounds like you, then link in the description, send a request to join. Now, as in most of my videos, I'm gonna be talking about specifically how this software applies to me and my business, which oftentimes doesn't apply to most people. So take that with a grain of salt. And what my needs are, are quality skin smoothing and speed of the software. So right now I use Imaginomic Portraiture. I've used it for about five years and it has been amazing. I know with Luminaire you can do crazy things like replace the skies and I don't really plan on my images looking like they're in Battlestar Galactica. Can't even, can't even pronounce it. Let's see, sky replacement. Let's see, galaxy. All right guys, I now offer galaxy sessions your photo shoot will be out of this world. Now, if you followed me for any amount of time, you'll know that detailed editing is like one of my least favorite things to do. It's right behind watching like a bad Netflix show because with this quarantine, I've literally gone through all of them. So the more I can automate, the better. Right now I use Portraiture for that. I have an action for it. However, Portraiture is about $200, whereas this software is only 90. It's less than half. So if it checks some of the boxes, I'll be switching. But let's go ahead and jump in and see what works, what doesn't work, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and if I think you should get it. Now with Luminaire 4, you can either use it as a desktop application or as a plugin to Photoshop. So for our purposes, we're gonna be using it as a Photoshop plugin. So we will edit in Photoshop, Command E. Then after you install it, all you have to do is filter, Skylum software, Luminaire 4. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that it takes a little while for it to start up. Now, I'm on an iMac Pro, 10 core, 64 gigs of RAM, we'll continue the trial. And here we are in the software. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. Here we go, so our image already looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, her skin looks amazing. But let's go ahead and see what happens when we start to apply some of these things. So. Here's all of your typical adjustments that I would normally do in Lightroom first before I brought it into a software like this. However, if you wanna do the entirety of the editing, you can do that in Luminaire 4. The second one is our creative effects, and this third one is going to be everything for portraits. So let's first do the skin enhancer. So this slider is basically going to do the effect that Portraiture does. It's designed to smooth the skin without affecting too much of the actual detail, the pores and things. So let's see how well that works. Let's go all the way extreme. We'll go all the way up to 100, and we'll zoom back in. All right, here is without, and here is with. It's pretty impressive. It's a little, you know, obviously it's a little much. Any, anything you do at 100% is going to be a little much, but I'm really, really impressed that you're able to, let's zoom in even another, even another level. There's still texture in the skin. It's essentially doing the bottom layer of frequency separation, and it's doing a really good job of it. If we come back out, let's do 50%. That's a little bit more normal of what I would expect. So here's without, and here's with. That does a ton, that saves me a ton, a ton of time. Now the next tool that it uses in here is the shine removal. If we bring this up all the way, it's gonna take all of these highlights and just mute them. I think this works better than the highlight slider in, in Lightroom if you're gonna be using it for something like this, but I typically like having really, really bright sections of the photograph. This might be a little bit bright, but on her, on her face, I want to have some of that brightness. It also has the ability to do AI skin defects removal, which is gonna see larger blemishes and take them out. But the next thing I wanna do is the portrait enhancer. So now this has all kinds of really crazy stuff, and this might be the reason to go for this software over something like portraiture. I typically try and get my faces really bright, and you can do that just by, just by sliding. This is going to brighten only her face. That's amazing. The next one that I think is actually really cool is this eye enhancer. Now take a look at her pupils. See how it brightens up the catch lights in her eyes? Now this is where I think it gets a little bit goofy is stuff like this, how to slim your face or enlarge the eyes. I understand that 
that this can be helpful and that this has its place, but I'm personally like, I think adjustments like this, it, it's not as much of an honest representation of what your client looks like. And so I'm morally against doing stuff like that. So we're gonna take that completely out. Improve eyebrows is actually pretty cool. It darkens up the eyebrows, makes those look really nice. And then it's got some different things with lips and whitening up the teeth. So let's kind of get a quick little scroll and see the difference that it's made here in this image. That is pretty amazing to me. I mean, if we take a look at the quality of her skin, we take a look at the brightness on the area that matters, we take a look at the catch lights in her eyes, all of that to be done with a couple of different sliders that I can save as a preset is pretty amazing. All right, let's take a look at another image. Filter, Skylum software. Now this is where the artificial intelligence of the software I think struggles a little bit. Here we have your typical general portrait. It's picking up her face just fine. But if we look at the picture as a whole, we're gonna go to Skin Enhancer and we're gonna do 100%. We're just gonna go overkill just so you guys can see what's going on here. So as we zoom in, uh, her skin is super, super smooth. Her arm is super, super smooth. But as we get down here, you can see it's actually done nothing to her legs. So if we look here at this arm section, you can see that that's doing a ton. But if we look here at this leg section and we click here, you can see that it's not actually doing anything at all. So to me, what that's saying is that for whatever their software is, however they designed it to pick up a face or a body or what that's supposed to look like, it's going to interpret it based on what it thinks is a body part and smooth that. Whereas the way Porchster works is it's a color mask. So you choose a color or it has a good idea of what the skin tones are, and then it's going to mask and smooth only the areas that match that color. The negative of that is sometimes if their skin is relatively similar to their hair color, like if they're blonde, the hair can kind of get uh, a little bit blurred as well. I was super curious about the software to see if that would be a problem since it does everything AI and if it was going to be an issue to where if it wasn't just a close-up headshot, would it apply it to the all the right areas of the photo? And it looks like in certain situations like this, the answer is no. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the reasons why you would choose something like Luminaire. And the main reasons I've come up with on the portrait side of things is if it's really important to you to be able to do those localized smart adjustments like brightening skin and taking out dark circles and uh, brightening up their eyes and those sort of things, I think Luminaire is an amazing software. It's also amazing if you wanna do crazy cool sky replacements. I mean like that looks like magic to me. That's absolutely unbelievable that they're able to just like pop different skies in. This is so crazy. Dramatic sunset. Ooh, so dramatic. Why don't we just have a swimsuit photo shoot under the stars? Then it can also do crazy stuff like the sun ray, like place the sun, you know, wherever you want the sun to be. You can have some sun rays coming through. Like, look at this. As you move it, like the sun rays move behind the leaves of the trees. That is r just ridiculous. Now, to be fair, this is just me kind of clicking around the software for an hour and seeing how I think I could use it in my business. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be everything that you could use it for in your business. But back to what I need it for, the two main things that I need are speed of the software, how quickly it can I can use it and go through the images because I do same day sales sessions. So after a photo shoot, I edit 60 to 80 pictures all in an hour, get them ready for a client to purchase. And portraiture is super fast for that. And the second thing I need is, is how good is the skin smoothing? How well well does it kind of see the whole image and pick the skin out of the rest of the picture and apply a quality skin smooth. So let's go ahead and take a look at how long it takes for Luminaire to churn through 70 pictures and to see how long it takes Portraiture to do the same. So let's first run this with, uh, with Portraiture. We're gonna go batch. We're gonna choose my boudoir by Sasser, Portraiture by Sasser preset action. And then we'll just hit okay. And when we do that, I wanna set the timer on my phone. All right, so we have our stopwatch here. I'm gonna click OK and tap this at the same time. We are off to the races. All right, six minutes and 17 seconds. We're gonna go to batch processing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to user settings. Then we'll choose SAS number one. That's the preset I did for skin smoothing at 50%. We'll add Luminaire onto the end of the naming scheme. Go ahead and get it going. One, two, three. All 
All right, five minutes and 34 seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and compare the differences in actual quality of the portraiture versus of Luminaire. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and you can see here this top layer is Luminaire and this bottom layer is background. That means this bottom layer was portraiture, this top layer was Luminaire. So if I uncheck this, you can see almost, almost no difference. Luminaire looks a little bit softer, a little bit more refined. So if I move this line to the left, that's all Luminaire. If I move this to the right, this is all portraiture. So you can see, especially in her forehead, I don't know if the compression of YouTube, but you can see it's a little bit cleaner, not hugely. They're pretty comparable as far as quality. So in comparison, for me, the two most important things, speed and quality, I'm gonna give it to Luminar as far as quality goes. I thought that the, just the texture that was retained while doing the skin smoothing was really impressive. So I'm gonna give it to them as well as being able to do things like just brightening up just the faces and also enhancing the eyes. I thought that that was amazing to be able to do as like one batch edit. However, it did seem to be about twice as slow. It came out to be 1.7 times slower than portraiture on the test that I did here. And then on another one that I did recently, it's 1.8 times slower. So if you're really trying to keep things super, super fast, then portraiture is gonna win. Uh, but I think it's worth it as far as, at least if you're batch editing, to use Luminar. Plus, it's like around half the price, but I want to hear from you. Have you used both softwares? Have you compared them? Do you like one more than the other? Let me know in the comments and come join me in my Facebook group if you're interested in being a professional boudoir photographer, full-time, part-time, whatever it is, we'll get you where you need to be. And I will see you guys in the next video.